and that'll get some of the kinks out of the way, I hope. And definitely feel free to, hey, Ryan, what's up? Hey, not much, what's up? Um, we got a little bit, uh, we got better lighting. We're up out of the basement today. Yeah, so good. I think I, I'm loving this. So Claire's coming in. She said she was losing her mind because of her power cord. Hey, Claire. Your friend Kayla's here. Yes. Very excited. Um, sorry, I should go back in the order. Jeremy, are you pitching? Hell yes, you know it. OK. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Ryan, are you pitching? Not today. OK, Claire, are you pitching? I think she will be. Who, Meg? Yeah. Oh, is she coming? Yeah. Okay. And Claire? Yeah, I'll pitch today. Awesome. All right, we're going to just let people trickle in for a little bit more. Um, we are broadcasting live. So that seems to be going okay. I gotta figure out a way, there we go. If anybody wants to talk or whatever, um, please feel free to ask questions and all of that. Got James coming in. I don't know if you could hear that delay. Sorry. Hey, crew, you doing okay over there? It's weird now that I can cross, go across the room at you without that window being there. We can both see each other's sets. It feels surreal. <laughs> this is kind of what, like dissociating is. <laughs> it is? <laughs> Do you think the uh, production's a little better, though? The aesthetic around you guys is so much better. I love it. Yeah, we got this. I'm not sure. Just <laughs> I'm trying to make the mushroom and the grills be seen. <laughs> is Tal is Tal you gonna talk? Hey, what's up, James? Hi, not much. Are you gonna pitch, James? Yeah. I wasn't sure if I was allowed to pitch again. There are no rules. Well, 99 seconds in the crowd picks. Those are the only two, I guess, rules. Okay. Um, who, Shana, you pitch it? Hey, not today. Okay. What about Mark? You going to pitch? No, sir. Okay. All right, so we've got a steady stream of people still coming in. It's only two minutes after three. We've gone live on Facebook and we've got uh, about seven people watching, eight people watching. Uh, hoping to get a few more people online before we start. Uh, we put you on the list, Meg, is that okay? All right. Uh, so right now, 
We've got five pitchers. We've got Kayla, Jeremy, Meg, Claire, and James. We're, I think my echo, my echo is coming from you guys. Ezra. Yeah. Is that better, everyone? Yeah. Okay. Um, sorry about that, but I'll be quiet when you are talking, too. Um, so I'm going to let people keep trickling in. I'm going to start talking about our sponsors and all of that in a little bit. I was hoping that uh, Katie was coming because she is uh, sponsoring this with Power and Passion, and I wanted to talk to her. So I'm going to tag her in a comment over here. Katie Marie. I can't find Katie. Katie. Yeah, I tried that, but maybe it won't let me uh, put her in the comments. I'm sure everybody on Facebook uh, wants to watch us struggle with. Is it a K? Is it a T? Oh. I messed it up completely. Hey, uh, Mark, where you been? I thought we were going to work on the production this week or something. Um, I got to do Shana's thing first. Okay. She has priority fair. this week. That, that's fair enough. Are we doing Friday or Sunday this coming week? This coming week is Friday. Okay. So we'll have another 99 problems, but a pitch ain't one on Friday at 9 a.m. So what I'm going to do, oh, Erica, I didn't ask you, are you gonna pitch today? Hello, hello. Are you there, Erica? Casey on Facebook said we're keeping it real. Um, I hope we're keeping it real. Okay. Well, what I'm going to do is try to, oh, all right. Someone I've been wanting to ask a question is coming on the screen. Hey, Fonda, how's it going? Hi, Jerry, it's going well. How about for you? It's going really well. Hey, uh, just so, so I can give a shout out to everyone on Facebook and on the Zoom meeting, Fonda was one of our judges for the hatching on Thursday night, uh, which we all seem to manage to keep it together despite every technical problem ever going wrong at once. Uh, so thank you again, Fonda, for doing that. And then I saw your, your post about the masks that you were selling, then you sold out all of those masks. Yes. Uh, so that was great. Yes. And uh, then the other thing, I, I also gave a shout out to your mom, uh, ah, which I thought was great that your mom you was that, there. She said and, thank you. Oh, well, she's welcome for sure. But the other thing is I've been winning to ask you is, uh, um, who's, who's Frank? Who is Frank? Yeah. Oh, Frank is that your, Brewer. Is that your That's cousin or something? Uncle. Well, your I uncle. Have uncle Frank. Yeah. I have a nephew or a cousin, Andrew Brewer, who runs a, a charitable organization for men called MAD here in Lansing. Yep. I, I know both of them. I, uh, went to school with, uh, I think I went to school with Frank. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah, that's my dad's brother, my deceased dad's brother. Oh, sorry about that. So, yeah, well, I was unless you went that. with his son. You may have gone to school with his son. When Frank did Jr. his son? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Frank Jr., yeah, for sure. I think it would have been the junior. Like, he'd be about 53 right now, not to out his age, but. Uh, uh, I, I don't know that maybe. It might be around there. But yeah. we know some of the same people. You're good people. I love you and I appreciate the shout outs. Uh, thank so. you so much, but we love you too. Um, you. All the entrepreneurs, 
I, actually, this is a great lead in for me to start talking today. So, you know, we're, we're looking at 2020 and I'm looking at all of these problems we have. We've got, you know, this pitch competition called 99 problems, but a pitch ain't one. And, you know, it's to me to have this pitch competition is a very important thing. It's a, it's a place for entrepreneurs to come together and to start expressing themselves. And when I look at 2020, I think it boils down into two big problems that we need to face right now. And, you know, I, I say two big problems. There's probably, you know, another thousand relatively large problems that are right behind that. But the two that I really, you know, one is enough is enough. Another is, you know, our public safety, our public health. And so we've got to kind of address and take on COVID-19. And I'm just going to very quickly say to everybody, please put your mask on, please social distance, please get this back under control. Um, this is serious. It's real. It always has been real to let this turn political and to have people just throw temper tantrums at you and say they're not going to wear a mask and they have these rights and all of that. It's really doing us a disservice and it's putting the, the, the poor people that are, and, and poor, I don't mean uh, uh, income right now. I mean the, the people that we've put out in harm's way in front of uh, the public, the people that are delivering your groceries or at the grocery store or making your food or whatever, you know, that it, it's, they're, they're really uh, put in a really horrible position right now. And tomorrow they're going to have to start enforcing masks on people. And please just be nice. Please just be kind to these people that, um, are just trying to make a living and just trying to keep us all healthy and just trying to to do what they're asked to do by their companies or whoever their employer is and help protect those people too because they're doing a great service for us and no matter what you believe and i don't know how science became such an opinion but no matter what it is that side you're on just put a damn mask on and go to the store get your stuff and get out and leave these people alone. Let them do their thing. Let them go home to their family. Let them be safe. And let's get this, this COVID out of the way, or at least a better way to deal with it so that we can move on. And now couple COVID with the other big problem that's always existed since the birth of our country, and that's systemic racism. You know, you pile that on top of COVID and you see that a lot of black, brown, and poor people are the ones I was talking about. They are the essential workers. So, you know, there's a, a great time in history, you know, where the people that seemed like the, the, the bottom class or whatever people wanted to say are now the most important people doing the most important things. So screw everybody for putting people down like that and, and classifying them and all of that. And the people that are the most non-essential buying the most non-essential stuff has really been exaggerated. But what I'm really trying to get to is that this is the year of the entrepreneur. We are facing so many problems. And what is an entrepreneur's job but to solve problems, to use innovation and creativity and your, your basic processes and systems that you know to build something that is sustainable, that fixes a problem for somebody. And that's what we're here to do. We're here to fix problems. We're here to build a better world. And, you know, our sponsor today is Power and Passion. I wish uh, Katie was here joining us because she won the pitch competition last week with her new clothing brand. And she wants to roll the money back into the pitch competition. So she is sponsoring it this way, week. And what she's doing with Power and Passion and trying to restore the judicial system, or I'm sorry, 
to restore justice within the judicial system and help returning citizens, you know, keep from making technical violations and going back to prison. That's such an important part of building our strong community, involving everybody in the solutions to the problems that we have as a community and strengthening our community. So if we want to defund the police or if we want to strengthen our community or if we want to invest in black communities at some level it's it's up to us to figure out how we're going to solve these problems these are our problems that we want to take ownership that have unique causes and unique constraints and let's let's grab these problems and start working on them together and solving them and building a strong community that we don't have to let these police come in and be dangerous around us, or we don't have to depend on the police for the most minor of things. You know, get off your front porch and talk to your neighbor, wave to everybody, get to know the guy down the street, you know, tell the guy that you're a vet and that the fireworks are you know, causing PTSD. Go out and talk to your neighbors and say you want to do fireworks, whatever it is. Let's start talking to each other and solving the problems in our community and um, moving this forward. We can build such a better world and we keep seeming to try to buy it from Amazon or to buy it from the East Coast or the West Coast. And I'll tell you right now, we're going to hear five or six people today that have solutions to problems that are relevant, that make our community stronger, that make our dependence on others to come in and tell us how we should be less likely to have to happen. So let's get out there. Let's be entrepreneurs. Let's step up to the challenge. Let's solve these problems. Let's create sustainable things and let's be innovative and creative and pursue our happiness. And at the same time, knock down all the causes to all these things we're not happy about. And to me right now, that all tends towards or leans towards the efforts behind Black Lives Matter and social injustice. So as we always do, a shout out to um, Black Lives Matter and the work that you're doing. And all of us, whether we're Black or we're not Black, whether we're marginalized or we're not marginalized, remember, let's get behind this bus and keep rocking this bus and tipping it over because a victory in human rights for anybody is a victory in human rights for everybody. And so that's how our entrepreneurial programming, our entrepreneurial pitches fit in with the today's problems and what we feel our obligations are to make this a stronger community that again, you know, stronger communities don't need what, Bilal? I don't know if you could hurt him, but he said uh, strong communities don't need cops. And then we always do another, you know, we the kind of theme of Sesame Street where, you know, they had a word of the week or a number of the week or day or whatever it was. Um, we've talked about things like defunding the police, Black Lives Matter, equity versus equality. Um, today, I think that you know, I've, I've got Bilal here. Bilal and I know each other from Grand Ledge. Um, Bilal is, uh, you know, he's, he's really an amazing person. He's, how old are you, Bilal? If you don't mind me asking. I'm 21. 21, and I've known you since, I don't know, probably 10 years. Oh, a long time. <laughs> <laughs> and Bilal grew up in Grand Ledge. And I think you guys all know some of my... Um, you know, some of the battles that we've had in Grand Ledge over the years, whether it was uh, with skateboarding, with the chickens, with the racism, with the, the fledge not surviving and all of that, or not that it wasn't surviving. It didn't, didn't thrive in that area just because we didn't get along with the people in that area. And we're just, hey, mute, yes. Um, the... Uh, they keep debating about this Confederate flag. And I just, I wanna say, quit debating.
get it on the agenda, get it, get it approved and be done with this. This is bullshit. Get rid of your Confederate flags in your parking lots, on your t-shirts, on your bags, on everything. I don't know why you haven't listened for all of these years. It is hateful. It is a symbol of, you know, I, I was thinking this morning what I was going to say. And I remember, you know, the number one reason or number one uh, question that every kid gets wrong about the Civil War in school is they say, oh, no, it wasn't about slavery. It was about state rights. Well, how come every kid gets that wrong? The reason every kid gets that wrong is because it's a lie. It is. It was about slavery. It wasn't about states' rights. And it's something they're trying to trick us into. They're trying to educate us in a different way. The, the Civil War was about slavery. The Confederate flag is about slavery. Go put it in your history books. Go read about it so you don't repeat it again. But get it off your damn backpacks, your windows, and your T-shirts. I don't know if you want to add something to that, Bilal. Um, I've been frustrated with this subject for a long time. Uh, I have a stake still in Grand Ledge because my kids went to Grand Ledge. Bilal was raised in Grand Ledge. A lot of our roots are in Grand Ledge, and you're embarrassing us, Grand Ledge. Yeah, um, my, my biggest thing is that like, there will never be a time where you need a statue, a sticker or a replica of the Confederate flag to remind people of how awful the Confederacy was. When, you know, history books exist and are the primary way people learn about history. I mean, when's the last time you went or saw any statue and actually genuinely walked up to it and read the plaque? Probably a few years ago, right? And then the other thing is like, it is a disgusting part of history, and even if you want to keep it for your culture or for your heritage, I mean, we can talk about, like, um, with the Nazis using the swastika. That was originally a symbol used by some Buddhist temples in um, the India region, uh, and it represented, like, peace and whatever. And as soon as the Nazis used, started using that symbol, every single temple that originally used it dropped it because they recognized that you don't need to tie yourself to a symbol because it is just a symbol. If someone else takes it and remakes it something that's awful, let go of it. There's absolutely no reason to hold on to it when it's now commonly seen as this terrible thing. There's no use in being like, well, like 10 years ago, 100 years ago, it was something completely different. It doesn't matter. Just like language, it develops and it changes over time. And if it becomes something awful, stop using it. <clears throat> and that's all I have to say. And as all, so first of all, thank you, Bilal. I appreciate that. Anybody else wants to chime in, then feel free to do it. If not, uh oh, I gotta I gotta fix my screen real quick. Um, but if you'd like to, go ahead. I gotta go uh, make something happen on the screen real quick. If not, Kayla, take a deep breath. We're going on in a minute. I think that you saying that that's like a, like it was originally a peace offering because I know or a peace symbol like people and there's like racist people that like say that kind of shit you know mm -hmm. it's like if they if that's what they believe then their peace is putting other people in more danger so that they can feel at peace so like that is not and peace and it's more fear in yeah, it's not liber. It's not like it's not like for everyone. You know what I mean? It's not liberating, and it's not actual freedom. It's oppression under the guise of being of freedom. Yeah. Especially also, they don't get to decide that. Yeah, especially you know? up, here, up here in Michigan, if you have a Confederate flag, you're you're an idiot. Like straight up, why do you have that? We are in Michigan. That is right. not ours to begin with. We fought against that. You are literally stupid. Have, take a history class. I mean, right. shit, just look look it up. Oh, yeah, and just listen to the people that it actually like affects more yeah. than like listening right. to like yeah. some white dude that just thinks it's cool to have it on his back. Mm -hmm. his truck. Like, he does not. My fucking favorite idiot. part yeah. is um, <laughs> that you really can't say that it's not. You guys are rambling. At this point. Oh, sorry. Because it's used by hate groups outside of the country. All right, Kayla, did you take a deep breath? Okay. Yeah, I'm ready. All right, so what's gonna happen is I'm gonna 
you can see that's going to refocus and you're going to be able to see that 139. You'll be able to see it in a second. That's your timer. Um, when you start speaking, I'm going to press start. And when it gets down to zero, you're finished. Okay. Okay. So are you about ready? Yep, I'm ready. All right, here we go. Hello. Hello. Okay, here we go. Hello. Hello. Okay. Hello. Do you want me to go? Yeah, as soon as you start, I'll uh, press the... As soon as you start, I'll press. Okay. Hi, my name is Kayla. I'm a personal trainer here in Lansing, currently studying psychology and personal health. I'm here to pitch in a valuable service to our community. Being someone who struggled with depression, anxiety, and weight fluctuation, I would like to establish a wellness house that provides comprehensive wellness services that care for the mind, body, and spirit. It's my hope to establish a collaborative of wellness professionals to address the specific needs of each client with little to no cost. I would like to create a one-stop shop with wellness professionals, including educators, life coaches, therapists, nutritionists, personal trainers, et cetera, to help people reach their total wellness and healing. I want, to be, I want it to be a safe place for people from all walks of life and for them to feel supported and welcomed, a place that embraces and supports diversity in the Lansing community. It is my hope that it would be a hub to showcase local businesses here and talent that makes people aware of the services that we have in the Lansing community. It's also my hope to establish this house as a nonprofit organization to apply for grants to financially support these programs and future services. I believe this is something in, that our, com our community truly needs and will benefit from. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time and for listening. All right, good job, Kayla. Took it down to the last second. All right, so now I forgot who's up next. Oh, up next is Jeremy. All right, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. The public's perception of the typical library is still stuck in the 1950s. Hollywood and other media is largely to blame for this. They commonly portray a library as a large, poorly lit room, row upon row of dusty old books, and the librarian typically female, has thick glasses, wears a sweater, and her hair is up in a bun, and she goes around shushing people. It's no secret that libraries need to update their image. As a whole, libraries are doing great things. Outreach to senior centers, teen centers, doing online programming available to everyone, and in-person classes pre-COVID, and tech support. In my first year working at a library, several things have become very clear. Staff are enthusiastically on board with change, but we can't do it alone. We need to recruit members of the public, the young, the visionaries, the LGBT community, the small business owners in search of a co-working space, the tinkerers and artists who have artwork or products they want to showcase. The Library Perception Liberation Front will be formed of a cross-section of library staff and the above-mentioned groups, sharing a common goal to bring the public's perception of the library into the 21st century. All right, Jeremy, good job. Everyone's clapping, they're muted though. Um, okay, up next is Meg. Just let me reset Meg and when you're ready, start. Awesome, thank you, Jerry. I'm Meg and I am most passionate about helping folks have comfortable and meaningful end of life experiences. As a registered nurse, I've seen a lot of people have end of life experiences that 
um, aren't well planned and then they aren't aligned with what the person would have wanted. Right now, most people are dying in hospitals and usually hooked up to a bunch of tubes and machines. And right now we don't focus much on people's mental health or spiritual well-being near the end of life. Creative Dying is the project that I've been working on for the last few years. And Creative Dying is focused on helping people start conversations about death, helping people plan for the end of their lives, and also creating spaces where we can have meaningful end of life experiences. So right now our little team is working towards creating a network of hospice centers that are inclusive, that are community-based so we can help care for one another, and that are psychedelic friendly. We, I know that talking about death can be really challenging, but I've found that by doing so, we can improve the experience for ourselves and for other people. So I appreciate this space and I appreciate being able to talk about this. Thank you. All right, good job, Meg. It's coming a long, long way, isn't it? All right, Claire, are you on there? Yeah, I'm here. Are you ready to go? Yep. All right, when you start talking, I'm ready. Hi. Good afternoon, my name is Claire. As we look around the world and we see the level of problems that we're facing in our world, it's clear that we need a hero. But what is sad about our world today is that we've been conditioned to believe that we need a hero to come and save us. But what I believe is that we are the heroes that we are seeking. That our world would have us believe that we're sheep who need to be guided and taken care of. But the truth is that we are wolves. And the only question that we need to ask ourselves is which wolf we will feel, feed each day. Will we feed the wolf of fear that lives in our mind or the wolf of courage that lives in our heart? As the founder of Heroic Mama, the goal of every program I offer is to generate the ability to believe that we are the hero that we seek. That when we need an answer, we don't need to look outside of ourselves. It lies already within us. We are energetic powerhouses. And when we take care of ourselves to generate that energetic vibration, we can't but help but move in the world in a powerful and change-making way. It is time for us to stop being consumers who simply scroll and click that we need to step away from the society and the system within which we live to take the space to be able to listen to our own soul, to hear the truth within our heart and to develop the strength of spirit, mind and body to follow that truth to a better tomorrow. We are heroic mamas and we are changing the world. So uh, Claire's superpower is to end at zero every single time. <laughs> Thank you. All right, now I think uh, James is up. Yeah. You ready? Um. Uh. Yeah, I guess so. All right. You start. I'll start. Okay. So, Art with Friends is a project that I've been working on for a while to help improve access to art education and art supplies in the Lansing area. Um, doing art as a kid helped me a lot to heal from trauma and express my emotions. And I want other people to have that experience. And um, I don't want poverty or lack of access to keep them from doing that. So what I've been doing is having pop-up events before COVID. Um, I had a supply distro at the beginning of COVID where I gave art supplies to over 30 kids. And I right now I'm running an art contest with some really nice uh, prizes for kids. If you have any kids, have them enter that. Um, going forward, I'd like to register as a nonprofit and have more supply distros and have a free weekly class uh, that kids can attend. Um, I try to only do 
high quality supplies because I don't know if any of you have had the frustration of trying to make art with uh, very low quality things. I specifically am thinking of those scratchy markers. But uh, yeah, so I'm hoping to do a lot of things going forward and I've already done a lot of things. So thank you. All right, thank you, James. Hey, I gotta wait for a second. Erica said she would be right back. So I don't see her there. So just to remind everybody, we will um, have question and answers after Erica pitches and we'll spend a few minutes doing that. Then we will vote, including the people online and whoever gets the most votes will get the $99. So Erica, are you back yet? We'll be patient with her. So Kayla, you're one of the newest people on the screen. How are you feeling? You I like feel it? really good. Yeah, this is cool. This is a great thing that you're doing. And like, I'm like excited to just be a part of that for sure. And even just seeing everyone else that's like shooting for their dreams and being entrepreneurs. I think that's really cool. Well, thanks. But we're doing it now that you showed up. You're part of the squad. Yes, I love to be a part of the dream team. All right. Okay, Eric is back. Hey, we felt good, Kayla. Thank you. Hey, Erica, when you're ready to go. My turn. Okay. Go ahead whenever you want. Erica? Okay. You can start when you want. Okay, thank you. In my early 30s, I made some very poor choices regarding the company I kept and social environments I placed myself in. Eventually, I found myself struggling with hard drugs and an abusive relationship with a dangerous person. As I tried to move on and improve my life, I realized that effective change was not something that I was going to be able to make happen on my own. I sought help for my intense mental and emotional issues from several support groups, agencies, and organizations. None of these roads led to effective support. Most of the people that should have helped me failed to follow through with their responsibilities, and some of them outright betrayed me. Mm -hmm. I'm an intelligent and capable person, and I was dedicated and committed to changing my life. If it were that hard for me to find effective support, it must be doubly hard for those people that aren't as capable or committed. My pain and frustration birthed my business idea. Jubilee will be a network where people that are trying to change their lives can plug in and find the positive support they need. Jubilee will prioritize the development of vibrant and meaningful relationships ahead of profits and the bottom line. These relationships will allow for the sort of authentic and vulnerable sharing and learning from each other that precipitates genuine and lasting change. Jubilee will be established as a nonprofit so that we may fundraise and apply for grants. The business operations of Jubilee will include providing high quality home care and low income property management. All properties will be exceptionally well maintained. Profits will be funneled into projects that enrich the lives of our employees, clients, and tenants, and therefore benefit our community instead of developers. If I win today, I'll be using the money to uh, pay media production people for an event that I'm coordinating for September called When September Ends. Thank you for letting me share. All right. Good job, Erica. I got to turn that time. Actually, I don't have to do anything. All right. So now... Um, first of all, you guys see, oh, you can't see it, the glare. I was going to show off James's uh, painting a little bit. He was working on it last week. Not you, oh. not you, James, the other James. Okay. I was like, or, what? Don't get off my painting. It's not done. <laughs> Another James. You can see my painting. It's, it's right there. I can, I can see the tripod for sure. <laughs> Okay, so now let's spend a few time, a few minutes uh, asking questions. Uh, Kayla, Jeremy, Meg, Claire, James, and Erica. Does anybody want to ask them questions? And like Kayla, you can ask questions too, or Claire can ask Kayla something. So uh, anything is fair game. 
Uh, I actually have a question for Claire. Um, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Uh, I didn't quite get an idea of what you, you do for Heroic Mamas. So. Yeah, uh, I'm a life coach, um, certified nutritionist. So I pretty much focus on um, coaching moms to take care of our core fundamentals, our eating, moving, sleeping, uh, breathing, meditating, and prospering. Oh. And once we get our energetic foundation, um, encouraging them to pursue their life's destiny. Thank you. Anybody else with any questions? Uh, I have a question for Erica. I was just curious about what you your event for September ends. What does that entail? Because it sounds really cute. <laughs> I'm so tickled that you asked because it's one of my most favorite things to talk about, but it wasn't going to fit in the 99 seconds. So um, when September ends, this will be the fourth year that I've coordinated this event. And um, this year I have like a, a pretty great team helping me with it. And it's a community. So the format's going to be different this year because of the pandemic. But normally we call it a, a performing arts showcase and community marketplace. And it's just like an opportunity to bring together people from all walks of life so that we can um, do that intentionally and share through music, art and storytelling. And so normally like vendors would be set up and exhibitors and there's like performing stuff and um, great things for kids. Like last year, the zoo came, MSU community, or uh, what is it? Science theater came and did like an hour long stage demo of um, science experiments and that sort of thing. But we figured out that format really isn't gonna work that well for this year. So what we're doing instead is it's going to be held at the Fledge and it's going to be kind of like a VIP exclusive event for so the um, the last couple of years it's been a fundraiser for the city rescue mission because when I was help homeless they help I was hopeless also at that point in time but they helped me a lot with a lot of things so this was kind of like you know my way to build relationships with the community and give back to them so it will be a fundraiser for the um, city rescue mission and um, a part of that has been in the past, like inviting all the guests from the city rescue mission and then treating them to a definitely like a good meal and gift certificates to the vendors and, uh, you know, just whatever we can provide. But instead of like inviting the whole shelter this year, we're going to invite one family. So I think that's going to amplify the impact for that one family because there's like my team this year is pretty strong. So I expect like a lot of donations and uh, that sort of thing so that we can really bless this family with like a, a VIP experience. So the event's going to be held at the Fledge this year. And it's going to be like, uh, it's not going to be open to the public, although we're going to live stream it. And um, it's just going to be like a pretty cool exclusive event for uh, that one family and a uh, small group of volunteers and the entertainment. And I've got some activities coming for the kids. Like uh, I've already got Ryan Holmes. He's a local artist booked for um, doing art with the kids that day. So uh, yeah, that's what when September ends is. Thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. All right, I've got a question coming in to, to Meg from uh, Facebook. And the question is, you are wanting to create an alternative facility and it's coming from uh, Casey LaRue. Maybe I'm pronouncing your name wrong, their name wrong. Uh, and then also Meg from KC is how many people slash families have you helped at the end of life? Thank you. So right now we are working on basically starting conversations and doing end of life planning with people. But the longer term goal would be to have an actual in-person facility. And why that is, is because a lot of hospices right now are affiliated with a hospital. So it's still kind of treated as an emergency situation or a medically based experience. And so we're looking to create something that's really comfortable, that feels like a home, that has a bunch of nature accessible. So it's really kind of a community space, but also a dying center. And in terms of helping folks at the end of life, I've worked as a nurse on and off for five years now. And I've also had the opportunity to help 
some family and friends near the end of their lives. And in all of those experiences, we were so good at talking about their diagnosis, how their disease was progressing, uh, their symptoms physically. And we didn't do much in the way of talking about like how they were doing in their hearts and how they were feeling. And so that really was the inspiration for just starting real conversations about dying. Thank you for asking. All right, I think you answered Casey's question. Um, are there any other questions from the people on Zoom? Uh, all right, thank you. Uh, are there any more uh, questions from the people on Zoom for the presenters? All right, we're going to vote. Uh, so what you have to remember when I launched the poll is it doesn't let me update these as a, a kind of list like uh, we would for a normal operation, I guess. So you have to remember the order of the pitches. So let me just tell you that pitch one was Kayla, pitch two was Jeremy, pitch three was Meg, pitch four was Claire, pitch five was James, and pitch six was Erica. So vote for who you like. You can vote for yourself. Um, you can vote once and I'm expecting 10 votes. I have four so far and I've got one vote from Facebook. So we're at nine out of 10 and there is a clear winner already. So somebody hasn't voted yet. Oh, uh, you having trouble, Meg? Sorry. Um, I just so, sent it to you. I got it. I got it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna publish the poll, but you have to uh, um, bear with me because I've got to. You've got to add two answers. So as soon as I publish this poll, this is the winner. So the the person that has the most is the winner. Um, and I'll tell you two more pieces of data. So drum roll, here it goes. Can you guys see it? All right, so Kayla with pitch one, plus you got another vote um, and you can come off mute and talk if you'd like. Um, you got another vote from the crowd and um, uh, Erica, you got a vote from the crowd on Facebook as well. And uh, so did uh, James, you got a vote from the Facebook crowd as well. Oh, sorry, I missed. None of this is gonna change the answer. Cheryl uh, voted for you too, Kayla. So you got another vote. And uh, I think Cassie voted for um, uh, Erica as well. So still you won, Kayla. You got the most votes. Uh, Erica, you got the second most votes. And then it looks like uh, um, James got the third most votes. So good job, guys. Hey, Kayla, you want to talk for a second? Wow, thank you. I'm really excited and I'm just really happy that like, I mean, I clearly thought this was a good idea, but I'm like really excited that everyone else thought this was a good idea. And I'm like working on making it this dream and this project a reality. So thank you. Well, thank you so much for showing up. Uh, uh, come back as many times as you want. Uh, I think Claire had the longest streak for three or four in a row um, of winning, and that was pre-money, so she feels slated for it, I'm sure. <laughs> um, but come back as many times as you want. Jeremy, you, your pitch is coming. Man, it's getting there. I saw the, or I heard the uh, new things that you added today. Uh, James, people love you, so people are going to be, you know, everybody loves kids, so they're going to be reaching out to you, I'm sure, for figuring out how they can help even when you don't win. And always remember the $99 is just $99. It won't last more than a week probably. And what's important here is you're putting your, your idea out into the universe. You're putting yourself out in front of a crowd. You're making this happen. You're making your community stronger and you're giving us an opportunity to build our own future 
and not buy it from somebody else. And that to me is something that is extremely important with all of the problems we are surrounded with today, whether it's um, uh, systemic racism or the COVID-19. Those are the only two I'm going to be talking about right now. We need to get behind Black Lives Matter. I will say it again and help move this forward. Okay. This is the this is the time. This is the time for the entrepreneurs to step up and sell, tell everybody what our community needs, how we can help our community, and how we can strengthen our community. So we don't have music today because we screwed up our production, but that doesn't matter. Um, I know that Chos is going to be watching this at some point, and I'm going to call him out. Come on, give us a rap song. I'm waiting for you to come back. And everybody that's taking your time, getting your presentation ready, you don't need a PowerPoint. You don't need a video. You don't need it to be 100% smooth. Claire spent a lot of work making it come down to zero. Jeremy's on his third iteration. Get it out in the universe. Let's make something happen. I don't know, we don't, you guys can clap or something, but let's go out with something. I love you all very much. Friday at 9 a.m. Kayla, I'll be reaching out to you about how I can Venmo or Cash App or get you the money otherwise. All right. So much love to everybody. You guys are spectacular. Let's keep doing this. Thanks everyone for coming. Fonda, Kayla, you were new this week. I appreciate it. Do you like it, Fonda? I'm going off live, everyone. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I had my...